Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show. Dr. Jock Fugile is going to be here with us today from Merck Animal Health. We're going to talk about BRD, feedlot illness, uh, lameness, different things, and we're going to talk about non steroidal anti inflammatories. You're watching Doc Talk. We'll be right back. When you spot BRD in your cattle, that's your golden opportunity to target infection and its associated fever with a single dose of Resflor Gold, the industry standard dual therapy. To learn more, talk to your Merck Animal Health rep or your vet and see label at resflorgold.com. Animals intended for human consumption must not be slaughtered within 38 days of treatment. This product is not approved for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm here with Dr. Jacques Fugile, and, and we're going to talk about some things to do with BRD, lameness, but we're going to talk about something. You know, we always talk about the antibiotics, and we always talk about mm -hmm. the, the opportunity we have with that. But we're going to talk about a different class compound that can help today in, in non steroidal anti inflammatories. But uh, Dr. Jacques is a veterinarian. He is a beef technical services veterinarian for Merck Animal Health. He has, uh, you taught at the at Louisiana State University. I did. Yep. And had, uh, had my own private practice. Had your own practice? Did a stand at Louisiana State University, did a stand at University of Illinois, and now I'm with Merck. It's great. And it's great to have you on the show. And It's good to be here. Um, we went through the executive veterinary program together as, as classmates and, and, uh, this is this is one sharp veterinarian. So um, let's talk a little bit about BRD and just kind of some of the things that, you know, as we talk about respiratory disease, what are some of the things, why we have such a problem in cattle with respiratory disease? Yeah, uh, that's kind of the million dollar question. If we really knew the crux of that, we would we'd be a lot further along. It's kind right. of interesting to think about it. We've, you know, cattle have been fighting respiratory disease forever yeah and as technology improves as our vaccines get better the antibiotics we have get better the um, caretaking ability we have and the training we can give gets better they still fight respiratory disease no. we're not it's like they the the bugs stay a step ahead no matter what they they can they're very good at adapting and overcoming these yep. animals these organisms or it's still a three billion dollar problem in the cattle industry today that we still fight with and um, I'll, there's still stuff that we don't understand that we're trying to learn. And um, so we really need to focus on how do we decrease the numbers of animals that are getting sick, uh, decrease the severity of the disease once they get it. And there's other things we can do besides just antibiotics. And as these technologies are coming online, we're starting to have the ability to recognize these diseases, these sick cattle sooner and so we're earlier in the disease process so we can start getting some of these therapies in at an earlier phase and um, minimize some of the long-term damage. I, I think that regardless of what the ailment is, the sooner you get on top of it and the sooner you treat it, the better the case outcomes generally are. It's usually so. And, and uh, you know, it's not saying, and a higher percentage of them are, are successful. So, so when we start to talk about respiratory disease 
And as you mentioned, we have technologies now that we can identify them sooner in the pen to find those cattle sooner. Um, but, but if we don't, what are some of the things that BRD creates as an issue in, in, those, in the lungs or in the, the animal systemically that, that could have some lingering effects? Sure. But as you know, some cattle have the, a big rumen. Yep. So they, they, that occupies a huge space in the body. And so because of that, they're functioning on basically 30% less lung capacity than a horse, let's say, or another animal of that size. Yet they still require roughly two and a half times the amount of oxygen that a horse would require. So they're working on a smaller lung, uh, require more oxygen. And the, another neat aspect of the, the bovine lung is that it, it has several little segments, if you will, mm -hmm. and they don't communicate well. And so once that area gets diseased, it's done and it doesn't regenerate. It doesn't, its functionality is over with. So they start out on 70% of lung and any disease that happens, if there's enough damage, then they further reduce their ability to, to exchange oxygen and gas. And so what that leads to is reduced average daily gains, reduced feed efficiency, uh, lower quality carcass at the end, more days on feed, if I didn't say that. And, uh, um, plus, you know, it's, you know they, they, can, they, just, they just feel bad for longer and then it's harder on caretakers to watch these animals having a struggle you know yep. different times of the year they come into the summer they don't do as well it's just harder to move hot air and yep. then, you know so I, it takes its toll in time so that if we can get some therapy in early enough that's gonna um minimize some of these long-term damages then it's better for the cattle perfect we're going to take a break um, when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the technology and the ability to decrease severity of disease with Dr. Jacques Fuselet. We'll be right back. Time is money on the farm, and your cows are less productive when they're stressed. The Alertus on-farm test from IDEX allows you to quickly test cow side and identify open or pregnant cows within minutes on your schedule in the parlor, barn, or chute. It's more efficient for your farm, very simple to use, and puts you in control. With minimal training and reliable, fast results, sample-based pregnancy testing is better for beef and dairy producers. Learn more at idex.com slash doctalk. We see you. Working hard from the early mornings to the late nights and every hour in between. We see you. We see the pursuit, the desire, the effort, the hope, the goal of being a champion. And we see that you need a partner to keep your animals healthy and happy. With our countless products and quick and reliable shipping together, we can do just that. To the cowboys and cowgirls, to the dreamers, we see you. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part. From the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver, you rely on them to get their job done right, and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meat is Cattle Vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. ValleyVet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Jacques Fuselet. We're talking about bovine respiratory disease, feedlot ailments, and non-steroidals. And uh, Dr. Fuselet is a beef technical services veterinarian, has been in private practice for many years, um, taught at a couple of different veterinary schools, and uh, is just a wealth of information uh, on all things cattle. And, uh, you know, as we, as we were talking, one of the things that Dr. Epson always used to say over at K-State was, antibiotics don't cure the animal. Antibiotics kill the bugs and give an animal the chance to cure itself. 
that's a that still holds true today. <laughs> okay. So as we start to talk about these things that we see with BRD and and uh, you know fibrinogen and fibrin and and scarring and trying to get on top of this and and trying to decrease the severity to help these animals long term. What are some of the things that and research and things that y'all have been seeing? Yeah. So first thing is we have to understand what we're trying to fight. So you know, it's, we very we often discuss the drug versus the bug side of things, but when the bug versus the host side of things is is something that we have to pay attention to, and that's where these ancillary therapies come in. So when these animals get infected, their natural response is it's instead of a kind of a, the way I like to describe with vet students is think of it yeah, almost a war. And instead of using a sniper rifle right off the bat, they just drop a bunch of bombs. And it's a it's a non-specific type of response. And that's part of that is inflammation and the byproducts of that inflammation. And it's it's not specific to just the bugs, but it also causes you know lung damage and, and the tissue around it gets affected as well. So that is that cascade is where we get the long-term damage. So if we can intervene in that and kind of turn that off, we'll save some of the damage that's being done. So the, between the, the toxins produced by the organisms and the body's response to those organisms, uh, we have this long-term damage. So we found that if you, you know, use nosterotal anti-inflammatory drugs, like banamine is what yeah. we've been looking at, uh, it, and you use it early on, you can minimize that long lasting effect of that kind of over overall reaction that the animal has, the immune system has in the, that lung. And you know, it's, it's kind of to put it in perspective too, it's kind of like when we went through COVID, right? Mm -hmm. They said, you know, take Tylenol, take Advil, whatever to decrease the inflammation. Right. So that we don't get the permanent, so we can tamp that uh, inflammatory response down. Right. To have less damage. Right. And it's when we, the cattle is so good. I mean, they're prey animals, right? Yep. So they've evolved to hide any weakness. And they, to this day, even though we domesticate them eons ago, they still hide it. And so by the time we see, can recognize, you know, the signs of depression, the lethargy, the lack of appetite and so forth that, that they normally show, the, the disease process is going on and all that inflammatory damage is starting to happen. So, uh, Inflammation at the beginning of an infection is good, but by the time they show us any any sign that they have a disease, uh, we we're behind the ball. Yeah. So adding something like banamine to to slow that process down is very beneficial. Excellent. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to carry on on understanding some of these impacts of decreasing that inflammatory cascade and the positive effects you can have on the animal with Dr. Jacques Fuselet. You're watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us. Dr. Nels here, folks. We're super excited about this book on hiring. Have you made a bad hire? Have you hired someone you wish you wouldn't have? Are you looking to hire? It's a great short read on helping you in the hiring process. You can find it on Amazon, Kindle, Audible, or find it at drnels.com. Check it out there. We'd love to see you there. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Suprevo, the fast that lasts. Suprevo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Suprevo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Suprevo.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Jacques Fugelet, and we are talking about non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Uh, Dr. Jacques is a, a bovine veterinarian. He uh, Practiced, where was your practice? In south, southern Louisiana, south southern. central Louisiana, yeah. Cool. And so he was in, in practice for many years. Um, 
taught at a veterinary school. We got to know each other through the executive vet program, and now we work together on many different projects. Um, as he is a wealth of information for all of us veterinarians that are working with with beef cattle. Um, talk to me a little bit about you know some of the things that that we probably need to understand better about non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. And when we say non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, we're talking about uh, banamine, flunixin, megalamine is the is the compound. Right. Talk me through some of the things that, that uh, banamine does when we use it in, in BRD cases. Sure, so what it'll do is that there's all these pro-inflammatory signals mm -hmm. that, that are released by certain immune cells that, that the cattle have. And it's a cascade that goes down the line. Well, what's supposed to happen is the, the immune system is supposed to release some other signals to make it stop. And um, if it's if that doesn't happen, then there's just prolonged damage. There's the vessels get leaky, so there's uh, fluid that leaks out into the lung tissue. There's a lot of fibrin and score material that leaks into that the lung tissue, and it makes it non-functional. And and because of that, the the cattle have a hard time moving air, and and you know, the the depression continues, and the fever, and and so forth. So, so what what banamine would do is it would go in and it would turn off that pro-inflammatory signal, and stop the release of those what we call cytokines that that cause the leakiness into the that lung tissue. So it makes the fever re is reduced, the depression is improved, their appetite then is increased, uh, their ability to continue to move air. Um, fairly efficiently is, is maintained while the antibiotic has a chance to have a, an impact on the, on the bugs and the, the cattle immune system can continue to fight this infection without fighting itself. So it just really adds to that, that it helps the cattle immune system. Absolutely. One of the things that you, you, we often hear is some people say, well, I'm, I'm kind of afraid to use an anti-inflammatory like banamine when I'm treating for respiratory disease or any of the other diseases that have, uh, that re result in fever because fever is supposed to be good. And that's very true. However, at, after a period of time, it, it, it can be damaging. And so we've done studies looking at, does it have a negative impact on um, the immune system and the response that it has? Right. And, and the answer is no. Uh, there's only upside. There's no downside to using a nosterotals. In, yeah, with, I, with I, therapy you know, here. I don't know when, I, when I'm sick, taking an aspirin or uh, a, a, an Advil or Tylenol is pretty beneficial. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and so as we think about this and, and as I had talked, you know, when we get some of these cattle running these extremely hot temperatures, 107, 108, they're rambling down a, a, a path of, of destruction. Absolutely. And so helping those cattle is important. Absolutely. So very fast. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more. It's very intriguing to learn about non-steroidals uh, here with Dr. Jacques Fugile. We'll be right back. We see you. Working hard from the early mornings to the late nights and every hour in between. We see you. We see the pursuit, the desire, the effort, the hope, the goal of being a champion. And we see that you need a partner to keep your animals healthy and happy. With our countless products and quick and reliable shipping together, we can do just that. To the cowboys and cowgirls, to the dreamers, we see you. We are a start to finish yard, bring them in at 500 pounds and finish them out to 14 to 1500 pounds. Max capacity is about 15,000. We begin with the end in mind, which that means it starts from day one coming off the truck. Heard all sorts of stuff about the, the generics coming out from you know a few different companies here and there. But we started working with Bimeta. What I like about working with Bimeta is our rep. You know, he's, he seems like he's just a, one of us. Kind of, he knows he's been in the cattle feeding industry for a long time. He understands where we're coming from, what goes on in the feed yard. So we started implementing Macrosyn last July, and uh, we're using it as our, our first pole treatment. The, the, the data shows that the success rates on BRD you know, they're 
equivalent to the other macro lights that we were we were using. You know, we just feel fortunate enough, I guess, to get our hands on it, and it it works great for us for a you know first pull treatment. It's what really jumped out to us working with by me to meeting with the rep. Macerson's affordable. We finally got a product that everybody can afford. We try to do the little things right, whether it's from low stress cattle handling, animal welfare, how we work with the cattle every single day. You know, that's something we really focus on, but when you've got a product like a Macerson, it's just another assurance protecting you, controlling your BRD from what stressors are thrown out there or what mother nature is going to bring to you. This industry, it, it takes everybody, uh, whether it's working with the nutritionist, it's cowboys working with the veterinarians, everybody plays a part and uh, we expect them to do their jobs but also we expect you know the the drugs or what we put into the cattle to do their job too and I think these Bimeda products they're proven that they're doing the job for us. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. ValleyVet Supply. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Jacques Fugelet. We're talking about uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and um, Dr. Fugelet is a veterinarian with Merck Animal Health. He does technical services for the beef industry, um, has had his own practice, and uh, is one of those people that all of us uh, give a ring up to and get some information from uh, when, we're, when we're needing help on beef cases. We really appreciate that. Um, when, uh, when we're talking about the, you know, T talk about some of the different things that the non steroidals are doing. You know, we get into this, well, it'll stop long term damage, it'll, you know, but, but what are some of the things that, that uh, you know, besides shutting down the, the inflammatory response, mm -hmm. you know, we have fever and pain too, right? Right. Yeah. So anytime there's any kind of a, an insult, whether yep. it be an infection or trauma or anything in, to the tissues, there's, there's this inflammatory process that happens. Yep. And, and you know, there's different things we call cycloenzymes and, and cytokines and all these factors that, that promote some of this inflammatory response. And so you add a product like banamine, what it does is it, it blocks this production of this hormone that if anybody's ever done any artificial insemination they've heard of, it's called prostaglandin. Yep. And prostaglandin is very important in that inflammatory process. So if we can block the production of that, uh, then it stops this cascade where it, there's one branch of it goes to in, in, you know, making fever yep. and, and in, in increasing that body temperature. And then the other one's uh, going to be pain. And so they, they, often, they often go together. And if we can kind of cut it off at the top, it doesn't release, it doesn't promote down the line the production of these cytokines that I keep talking about that's going to help with leaky vessels. And, and it doesn't have to be just in the lung anywhere there's, that it has an effect there. It's going to have some leaky vessels so you can have some... Um, fluid settle out in the tissues and, and pain in that area because of uh, just those normal processes. Yeah, and we, and, you know, we talked about cytokine storms and, you know, Absolutely. I keep going back to the COVID situation, Absolutely. you know, but it really taught the public a lot about respiratory disease and yeah. what we're battling. And, and, and so if we can shut those, those cytokine storms off and, and lower the fever, but the, the pain response is quite interesting because now you have something that, it doesn't just limit it to to infectious diseases. This can can be used uh, just like we use uh, non steroidals for ourselves for for aches and pains and things of that nature, like lameness, right? Exactly, exactly. So anytime there's an insult to the tissue, that you can have pain, and it's because of this these processes. And so you're exactly right. If we use something like banamine to to stop that cascade, you know, you're going to minimize the pain, even if. You know, you take you, you give it after the pain's been shown. It will it'll stop it, and and you can see that reduction. We've, you know, we when we were doing uh, some of the testing and some of these studies to try to, how do you measure pain? You know, because you can't ask that the cow how bad does it hurt and take this medicine and does it feel better? And right. so we have these these force plates where they step on it, and it it measures how much force was put on, on those plates. 
and it's it's a pretty neat little diagram that shows up, but like a heat map kind of thing, yeah. you know. And so they 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 lame, they walk on it, and you can see the amount of where they're putting pressure. We administer some banamine and give it, uh, you know, period of time, a few hours, and let them walk across that mat again. And all of a sudden, you can see that there's a, a ton of weight. So they, that shows how much pain reduction is occurring just by using some of these nonsteroidals and blocking that whole cascade. Yeah, it's a great tool. Pretty neat. Yeah, it is. Appreciate you being on the show. I appreciate you having me. It's been it's been a pleasure. It's been great. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to learn more about what we can do, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Always work with your local veterinarian and nutritionist. With Dr. Jacques Fuselet, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and we'll see you down the road. Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals.